When multiplying decimals, we oftentimes treat them as regular multiplication problems, but for hands-on tactile learners, maybe the process behind it doesn't always make sense, and so you can also use area diagrams as a way of modeling the values and multiplying in smaller groups, kind of more of the distributive property, to be able to find out what the total is. So if you were given the problem 1 and 3 tenths times 2 and 5 tenths, well, what does that mean? If we set it up visually here, if we have a one hole, kind of more of the base 10 diagrams, one hole, so it's a big square, and then three tenths rectangles. And we have that extend down all of the way, being multiplied then by two and five tenths. So two holes and five tenths. So that each one of the big boxes represents one hole, each of the rectangles represents a tenth, and each one of the small squares represents a hundredths, you can find out, well, how much do we have? So if we count up our little squares, we have one, two, three, three boxes across, five boxes up. So we have 15 hundredths. Or if we want to put it in decimal value, we have that. Then we count up how many rectangles we have. So we have three here, three here for six, and five here for 11, or six and five for a total of 11. So we have um, 11 hundredths, and we can't quite write it in this way, so I'm actually gonna get rid of that. And then we have a total of two whole squares, two whole. So then how much do I have all together? Well, um, Every 10 units of one can be combined to transfer into one unit of the larger one. So if we have 15 hundredths, it really means we're going to take this one and add it to the hundredths here so that we have a five in the hundredths place. And now because we've added one to the hundredths, or uh, sorry, <laughs> tenths, tenths, I now have 12 tenths. Well, again, every time we have a 10 of one unit, that can condense, combine, and simplify to one of the larger units. So instead of having 11 tenths, we now have, because we added one, we're going to have 12 tenths. Well, I can only have one digit in that place, so I'm going to keep these two tenths and take this tenths here and combine it to make one whole. So that's going to let me add one to there, so that's going to give me three holes. So if I look at this, this is 3.25. That was a lot of work. So what we can actually do is just create a simple diagram where the biggest box represents whole numbers, the rectangles represent tenths, the small square is representing hundredths instead of making all of the lines. And by making each place value its own section of a side, it lets us then multiply and distribute correctly. So here I have a shared line of two by one. Two times one gives me two. Here I have a length of three tenths times two. Two times three gives me six. And because there was one decimal place in that multiplication, I need one decimal place in the answer. Now I go here and I have five tenths times one whole gives me five tenths because five times one is five, and I have one decimal place in the problem. Now I look here, and I had five times three, which gives me 15, and I had two total decimal places in the problem, so I need two in the answer. Now I can start adding all of these products up, making sure that I line my decimals up. So I have four numbers, I'll put in four decimal places, and plug in my numbers around it. Two whole means the two goes in front, 0.5, 0.6, and 0.15, and then I can go ahead and add them up. In the hundredths place, I only have a five. In the tenths, I have a total of 12, and then I carried the one from that to the whole number, and two plus one gives me three. So I have a final product of three and 25 hundredths. So I can get there the same way. This, is, this lays out place value by place value, what this is doing in a more simplified format. 
Um, it's still having you multiply all of the numbers by the other term uh, so that everything is properly accounted for. And this is the way area models work.